Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Executive Subcommittee of Lifelong Learning on 1st of November 2021. It's been a while since we met, um, so it's good to, to get back into the into the cycle of these meetings. Um, I advise everyone that today's meeting is being streamed live and recorded um, and available on YouTube after the meeting. Um, we've got a number of staff available um, as we go through the papers at today's meeting and they'll be introduced as we proceed through the agenda. Um, can I ask Danny if there's any apologies or substitutions? I know we've got Councillor Duff. Uh, yes, it's just the one apology from Councillor Duff and there's been no substitute provided. OK, thank you. And Danny, can I ask you to take a roll call of those attending the meeting, please? Uh, yes, so we can read it. Um, so just want to call your name, you can let me know um, whether you're in attendance. So, Councillor Rebeck. Uh, here, Danny, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sawa. Present. A uh, word from yourself, convener, and then Councillor Simpson. Present. Okay, so that, um, barring Council Duff, he's obviously submitted his apologies. That's everyone present, convener. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, can I ask if there's any declarations of interest from elected members in respect to the business on today's agenda? Nope. Thank you. Um, and that takes us straight on to the papers. So we've got the minutes of the exec subcommittee of 2nd of November 2020. Told you it had been a while. Um, can I ask if there, um, if we can agree those? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. And that takes us on to item four on the agenda, the standards and quality in schools, learning communities and preschool centres, daycare of children. Very snappy. Um, and I'll invite uh, Sharon Johnson to introduce the report and appendix one, uh, the summary of care inspectorate, daycare of children inspections, which are pages 9 to 21 of your pack. Okay, thank you very much, convener, and good morning, everyone. Um, it has been a long time since we've had a, a meeting of the executive subcommittee. Um, since November 2020, in fact, and, and that's been because there have been um, very few published inspections within which to provide um, information for committee. Um, Education Scotland did pause all inspections um, since March 2020, and the Care Inspectorate conducted very few routine inspections until very recently. So this report is therefore slightly different from our previous reports to committee. It sets out the findings of published reports by the Care Inspectorate only since the last committee in November 2020. However, Education Scotland have announced in September that they will be conducting visits from now until Christmas to schools who were expecting a follow through inspection. Um, and they're also conducting from now until December, three national thematic reviews across the country um, uh, against three particular themes. So one of those themes is health and well-being and how schools and nurseries have supported the health and well-being of children and young people throughout the pandemic. Um, they're looking also at outdoor learning and how outdoor learning has developed since the pandemic. And lastly, local approaches to recovery. So they want to see good practice from schools who have got improvement plans which take into account the impact of COVID. So we are obviously um, putting forward a number of, of schools and nurseries to support the Education Scotland thematic reviews and those visits are taking place next week and the week after. So um, we expect to see a number of our schools and nurseries included in the, the national reports that will follow from that. So during the period since we last reported then, there have been two different models of inspection also undertaken by the Care Inspectorate. The inspections that they always operated, um, which is looking at the national care standards and fo focuses on the quality of care and support, the quality of environment, the quality of staffing, and the quality of leadership and management. And four routine inspections have taken place within that inspection model. In, in this period. Within the four inspections within Perth and Kinross, um, there were 16 indicators evaluated and six of those were evaluated as, as very good, five were evaluated as good and five were evaluated as weak. The weak grades are connected to Perth College Nursery and, and Corner House Nursery inspections and therefore these are reported by exception. So 
Due to the pandemic, the Care Inspectorate changed their scrutiny activity to focus on um, arrangements made to support children's health and wellbeing um, and safeguarding during COVID-19, infection prevention and control practices which support a safe environment for children and staff, and lastly, the staffing arrangements which are responsive to the changing needs of children during COVID-19. Now, these inspections weren't applicable to the child minding services as they don't employ assistance. So that last quality indicator did not um, include those for child minders. So this is described um, in section 3.2 of this report as a key question five evaluations. And in person can Ross, eight of those inspections took place. And out of the 24 indicators that were evaluated, nine were evaluated as very good. Eight were regarded as good. Five evaluated as adequate and two as weak. So at present, these visits have ceased as all normal scrutiny inspections are returning to normal. The two week grades that we received as part of those um, inspections were evaluated as part of visits to Milnathort Nursery and to Morrison Nurseries. And therefore, these two inspections are also reportable for today. The early years team have been working to support settings management to ensure appropriate progress is made for both types of scrutiny. Settings have worked through an action plan to ensure improvement against the recommendations and requirements set out as a result of, of these reports. So Annie Carr, um, Quality Improvement Officer for early years, will, will take us through those. And um, I've given apologies for Ben Scott, service manager for early years, who would also normally be here, um, but she's, she's um, absent today and, and can't be at committee. So Annie and I will, will answer any questions um, as necessary as we go through the reports. Uh, but before she does that, I would just draw uh, your attention to the summary um, in, of all PKC inspections, which is Appendix 1. So this appendix shows the totality of all inspection activity within PKC since 2017. And it compares PKC performance against comparator authorities and national data up to September 2021. And James Childs has the detailed information about all of the data that goes into the summary report that's within, it, within appendix one. Overall, while most ELC settings perform well, we've obviously done an, our analysis against those quality indicators and we have reported at previous committees that improvements were required in some settings in three particular areas. And that was the, the quality of the environment, the quality of staffing and the quality of management and leadership. And we've spoken at um, a number of of committees about the, the reasons for that. And, and obviously the main reason is the, the doubling up of early learning and childcare provision within Perth and King Ross from 600 hours to 1140 and across all, all year in some settings. That has meant that we've had to vastly increase our staffing. We've vastly had to increase the, the leadership opportunities and the support for staff. And that has had an impact on our gradings. So the early years team have been working very hard um, to make sure that we address those issues and they're currently working with a number of settings to take forward action plans and address the outcomes of, of these inspections and also our own quality improvement activity. So where evaluations are, are satisfactory or below, then we put together a team around the setting approach and that is taken forward to make sure that we move forward at pace. And so currently we've got action plans in place for four settings which have been targeted by our teams by, and supported by, by relevant officers. So these settings are more regularly monitored than and settings who receive um, higher evaluations or quality improvement visits. And we also make sure that there's a final report for improvements that are presented to parents under those circumstances. So I'd like to um, draw your attention to the, the table at the very bottom of Appendix 1. And this is a new table that we've asked James to include um, in our, our report for this setting, for this committee. And that report really shows the, the current position of Perth and Ross settings as we stand at the moment. 
And you'll see from there that there's been significant improvements in all three of those quality indicators. So while the table at the top shows the historic journey, I think that, that all settings within Perth and Kinross, and that includes, and James will correct me if I'm not, I'm not accurate here, but that includes settings that actually are not, um, they're not responsible for Perth and Kinross. It's all providers, not just our funded providers. It's the, the evaluations of all settings. The table at the bottom is a more accurate representation of our current performance. Um, and we thought it was important to let elected members see that because I know that this committee are very um, carefully monitoring how we improve those quality improvement indicators. So um, obviously Annie and I are happy to take any questions on Appendix 1 before Annie takes us through the individual reports that we have in subsequent appendices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, I think the, the addition at the end of the paper, um, the current position uh, chart is really very helpful. So thank you very much for that, James. Um, can I ask if there are any questions? We put a queue in the chat box. Uh, Councillor Rebick. Thanks, Convena. Um I'm not quite sure to, how to ask this question, so bear with me, but I'm just trying to get a feel of, because obviously during coronavirus, the inspections have been a little bit different from normal, um, because obviously there's COVID safety been taken into account and, and future COVID uh, recovery is going to be very important. So, and it does touch upon it in the papers, but I didn't quite understand going forward whether inspections of um, earlier childcare settings will be um, how much they'll be normal in inverted commas, which is not the right adjective to use, but I can't think of a better one, but non-COVID related, if you like, and how much will be about COVID safety and how much will be about COVID recovery, because although COVID safety and COVID recovery is clearly really important, we also don't want to forget that um, the, the normal matter of education is continuing as well. So I'm just wondering if there's if I can have a flavour of how inspections going forward might look in that regard. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, happy to answer that, convener. And Councillor Rebick, the, the inspection is from both Care Inspectorate and Education Scotland going forward. While we're, we're saying that they're routine inspections, they will absolutely be looking at COVID recovery. Um, and the Care Inspectorate had pulled together uh, what they called a key question five um, inspection because no one was allowed into nurseries or schools in fact so Education Scotland were not able to conduct their, norm, their normal inspection activity which would involve going into classes seeing how children were operating and obviously classes weren't operating in the normal way either and early learning and childcare settings were open for key workers' children at various points across 2020. So the Care Inspectorate put in the key question five inspections, which were really just because of registered daycare, like care homes, they needed to ensure that the safety of children um, were, was being properly looked after. And so that was the only inspection that they took under the circumstances. And then from about April this year, they started the more routine inspections. So going forward, the key question five um, evaluations are no longer required. And so the Care Inspectorate and Education Scotland will be doing as much normal activity as, as is possible. But as the current mitigations are still in place, that part of that process will be to look at what the risk assessments look like and, and how well uh, settings are adhering to the mitigations that are in place. Thank you. I am very much uh, clear now. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for that. Um, Councillor Simpson. Thank you very much, convener. Just a, a general question about the, 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 the area concerning the quality of the environment. And I just wondered about, um, I'm very lucky in Scone, for instance, where the Robert Douglas School has huge grounds and a park opposite and so forth. Um, there are going to be um, nurseries that don't have much in the way of physical space round about them. Uh, and I just wonder to what extent that's shown in the figures, because if, if they don't have the space, they may be very limited in what they can do. Or is there something else that we can suggest they do? It's a very good question, Councillor Simpson. Yes, 
Thank you, Councillor Simpson. I'll, I'll perhaps start, but Annie can provide much more detail around that. Councillor Simpson, you, you're absolutely right about the, the reason that the, the nature of the environment is where we've had to do some work because we've got 108 different settings within Pairs and Kinross that we are responsible for. And some of those um, partner providers that we have are sometimes very small settings, sometimes they're houses. And with the increase in expectations with the national standard, then what we have to look at is making sure that those environments are meeting the increased expectations. And much of that has been about outdoor learning and outdoor space. And so um, as part of the early years funding, we have supported our partner nurseries significantly to look at their environment to ensure that there's a free flow of play and activity within the nursery. But more importantly, we've had to um, invest quite heavily in training and support for staff to, to make the best opportunities they can out of the outdoor learning um, activities that they can put in place. Um, and Annie will be able to provide a bit more detail about the work that we've been doing across all settings in this. Yeah, thank you, Sharon. Um, yeah, we have, we have been using the indoor outdoor access so that children are using their outdoor nursery garden. However, as you did mention, there are some places that don't have a large space. So we've been encouraging people to use the local community, um, local woodlands and park spaces, and children have been able to go there in you know, a safe, safe way with their practitioners. We've also been providing a lot of outdoor forest kindergarten training to our staff. So we've had three different groups of staff who've all done this training now. And we're also just talking all the time about the best ways to use outdoors at the current time. Thank you for that, Annie. I think uh, we've particularly appreciated the briefings that we've had as elected members on, on all of these matters because it has been such a, a fast changing landscape, if that's not a pun on talking about the environment, but landscape in, in which, um, you know, staff have had to upskill themselves really quickly. But I, th I think we were aware even before March last year at how, how our um, staff were gearing up in this direction anyway which will have which will have helped sort of ease the ease the transition so it is appreciated and um, one further question kind of on councillor simpson's are our green space teams do they work alongside ecs in terms of maximizing use of of open spaces that, that we have available so that these um settings can benefit from them i'm presuming i know the answer but uh, nods of the head seem to be coming round I can answer that. Yeah, we've actually been out working um, with the property team and looking at the landscapes around about different areas in the Perth city to see what we can utilise and possibly work with in the future. So yeah, we've been accessing a lot and, and even you know just going out on site visits to see what's available. That's helpful. Thank you for that. Oh, Councillor Simpson. Thanks very much indeed. It's really a follow up onto that one. I realise that many of the, the young people involved here are quite small for active travel, but you're never too never too small to start doing it the right way. And I just wonder to what extent we can involve the more the parents as much as or the, those people who are delivering the children to the child care to do a little bit of active travel, which would perhaps um, mitigate against the fact they don't have much space when they get there. I know there's been one or two things done for by the streetscape can be changed or there can be a an adventurous way to get to to get to nursery or back to the car or whatever. I just wonder what we've done in that respect. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. And Annie will definitely come in here. Um, but you're right, even though little people are little, we, we really do work very hard to involve um, parents in active travel activities. And any elected members might have seen the, the really fantastic project with the Bilhousie North Muirton, the, the streetscape um, project, which was a pilot and, and a, a really good pilot. And obviously we want to work on that. And we also start children extremely early with um, a project that we've been doing for a number of years in person can Ross, the play on pedals um, activities, which are happening in many nurseries, which supports the, the training of, of children in um, working with their balance, et cetera, through, through bike travel. So we're working very, very hard, but Annie, I don't know if you've got any further information to provide to Councillor Simpson and elected members on this. Yes, Sharon, we've also got our new family learning practitioners 
who we have appointed recently. We have 25 across the authority and they're working really hard with the families and most of that has been on outdoor play and different um, activities that they can be doing wherever they go. Um, so whether they're going to the shops or to visit Gran, they're giving them lots of ideas that you know are part of everyday life that can support with that. Could I just ask, you know, if, if I may, if, if we mentioned the, the, the Balhousie project, if, if the video is very good video about that is available, if that can perhaps be sent to all members of, of this committee, not of, of Lifelong Learning Committee, I think it should be prescribed viewing, I think. It's very, very <laughs> interesting. But, um, I'm sure that can be arranged. Yes. With the, with the title, Councillor Simpson says this is prescribed to viewing. I can ask questions a bit afterwards to make sure they read it, read it through it properly. You know? Pop quiz afterwards. OK, thank you very much for that. Um, that takes us on to the, the detailed um, reports in Appendix 2. Um, so I think was it Annie that's going to, to take us through that? Thank you. Thank you, convener. Uh, I'll just quickly introduce this um, paper. So this is um, a, a report that's here by exception and it's here because the there was a weak evaluation. This is from Thrive Corner House, which is a partner provider within Perth and Kinross. It's part of a large national group, in fact, and previous unannounced inspections had been very good and good gradings with no requirements. But this inspection resulted in one requirement and a weak evaluation. So Annie will, will take us through the report and happy to take any questions after that. OK, thank you. So Corner House is part of the Thrive Group, which have a number of nurseries across the country. And following a child protection incident on the 21st of May, the setting were given a six month period support plan from us, which is finishing on the 22nd of November. Um, following that and then following their and then they had a further inspection, which we've also put them on another improvement plan until February 2022. So since May, the Early Years team have been supporting the Thrive Group with regular weekly visits, focusing on improving the outcomes for children with ESN, enhancing children's experiences, both indoors and outdoors, building relationships with families and supporting staff professional learning. So we had some meetings with the newly appointed manager who started in September and the team from the Thrive Group themselves who also come up to Perth um, on a monthly basis and we're sharing the progress that they're making um, and identifying the next steps that we want to see. So quality assurance of staffing in the setting and monitoring was identified and we've now got a calendar in place in the setting. The consistency of staffing is an ongoing issue which I have addressed as well as many of the other members of the ELC team with the manager at our visits, as we do feel that that is hindering the pace of progress within the setting at the moment. Risk assessments and guidance is now up to date there, and it's regularly checked by the members of our early years team who are visiting on a very regular basis. And we have, as Sharon mentioned earlier, a team around the setting in that corner house nursery. The inclusion team are also involved and have given staff some training on the floor role modelling and different strategies to support the, the children they have in there who have additional support needs. Children's plans are now in place for children with ESN and meetings have all taken place now with their families, which we're really happy to hear. A core provision document for indoors and outdoors has been used in the setting and this highlights what should be in the environment, which resources they should be using and staff have been looking at how to improve all the environment there. They've each taken a specific area of responsibility and are working with our early years team to develop these further. They've had some challenges with their lunchtime experiences, which we are addressing and staffing at this time has also been changed to support the children in the nursery. The manager has started a parent focus group and they have now met twice virtually and family, families also welcomed a really good opportunity to go into the nursery um, to support the outdoor setting, you know, the outdoor garden. And they did a lot of work with the team one Saturday. 
parents are now very on board and I've, you know we've spoken with the group about not you know don't hide anything from your families talk to your families keep them involved um, and let them know what's happening which is a huge improvement for the group their staff are also now attending weekly meetings which hadn't happened in the past they have a one-to-one -one with the manager and that's really been helpful for looking at the key areas that people are wanting to develop looking at leadership across all levels and also just to develop and make sure that that is a really good setting for the children who attend. So that's our corner house. Thank Does you. For, thank you for that, Annie. Do any elected members have questions on that? Uh, Councillor Sarwar. Thank you, Lena. Um, I have a couple of questions. Is that all right? Um, uh, could I just check, is this one of the ones where there's been a new manager put in place? Right, OK. Yeah, um, yeah. So I was just wondering if you could say a little bit more about the staffing issues. Yeah, because of COVID, they've had quite a few people who have had to self-isolate. And what's been happening is they've been using the staff around the, the nursery and putting them into different rooms. So some of the baby room staff have been put to three to five year old rooms. So it's really just within the nursery that we felt there wasn't a great pace of, of change um, and improvement because of the movement of staff. However, I think more recently that has begun to um, lessen. So we're quite happy about that, although we're still focused on ensuring that there is a consistency of staff, and especially for the children. So um, I just noticed that Sharon's put about high staff turnover all. So that's what I was just wondering, was it just about COVID isolations or, or has there been kind of, you know, an issue where they're losing staff? And I just wondered if that was like a cultural issue within the place, if if there's reasons that people are upset or. I, don't I think with the, with the previous manager, there had been quite a few um, staff who have now left and moved on as well. Um, but not a, you know not as much thankfully now but there was for a period of time yeah thank you okay um i have one more question if that's okay yep fine. um i just i suppose one of the things that concerned me in the report was about the limited child protection knowledge and whistleblowing and also and obviously the importance of having that safeguarding in place and so i just wondered if you could speak to um how you how that's been approached and really what why that had happened and what we've learned from that situation yeah so there was a, a an incident in the nursery which we did address and very quickly um, supported the new manager to look at the guidance and all of her policies around safeguarding children she then worked closely with her staff team um, and i think that's been a majority of their their evenings have been looking uh, how best to protect their children and keep the children safe. I could perhaps just provide a, a, a bit further reassurance around that, Councillor Sarwar. It was actually a member of our staff who 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 noticed the, the issue within the nursery and reported it. Um, and so therefore, what we recognised was that, that leadership and management within the nursery, as we described already, um, required much, much further scrutiny. Um, we always, with all of our partners, have a very good, what we call a, a, an in-kind offer, which is a very strong um, network support system where the um, invited managers are invited to meet with, with Ben as service manager and all of the early years team. We have a very comprehensive programme of leadership and management training for, for um, education, early learning and childcare managers, for partner providers and local authority, and a very good professional learning development offer for staff and practitioners. And, and pra partner providers are invited to all of those activities. We also keep a record of those who attend and who don't. And so therefore, part of our increased, I suppose, scrutiny of this as we've moved from you know, 36 partners to now 108 across the piece, is making sure that we've got a really good monitoring system where that doesn't happen. But what I would say is that we would very much commend our members of staff who, who saw something they, they didn't think was appropriate and, and took action quickly. So um, I think we have to commend the staff for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Well, that's very helpful. That um, update on the the situation is it's it's a it's a nursery that certainly uh, Fiona Lewis and I will be familiar with for passing passing by it on a on a regular basis in the days when we used to go into Perth every day, um you know so it we're aware that it's you know a real popular nursery in 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 its sits in its community there um in Perth so yep, uh, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Kevin. I just like a sort of general question concerning that, well, particularly recommendation four, I suppose, where they highlight the importance of team meetings and so on. Presumably, it's a bit more difficult now that we're providing twice as many hours as before to find time in the day to, to have these. Is there any advice or any um, reassurance perhaps we could have that the, the opportunity to have these team meetings is there? Obviously, when it was 600 hours, the, the the kids went away eventually and you had time to have a meeting. Now they must be there all the time. And uh, sometimes having team meetings tacked on the end or slipped in somewhere is not the best, not the best way of addressing that. And I wondered if we'd any any idea how we go about having that as part of the working day. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so we we do have every practitioner is registered with the Triple SC and they have a number of hours which they have to legally and obliged to take part over five years. So we do use those hours as well as collegiate times. So that's a time that's planned in the week where everybody can either virtually or in face to face room meetings, join together and look at the different work for the setting. So yeah, these team meetings have taken place regularly. The manager has been very good at building relationships with the team to ensure that everybody is happy that the right time for them um, because some of the practitioners also have families at home etc so they've worked together to find suitable times in the week and I know that there's also an information sharing book so that people who maybe work part-time are not there at the meeting but they can also be involved and have a, a look at the book and share that information. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rebick. Thanks very much. It's maybe more of a request than a question, I guess, because I think we've learned over the years you have to try and read between the lines a little bit with these inspection reports. But if my reading between the lines is vaguely accurate, it feels like we probably weren't in a very good place with this nursery for a while. However, it also feels like we're probably already on the road to making it better. But I guess my sort of question stroke request is that can we be kept informed maybe a little bit uh, more quickly than we might otherwise be in respect of that improvement um, in this committee, please? Thanks. Can I can I also ask um, about this one? Obviously, this is part of a, 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 com a number of settings across Scotland, is it, or or wider? I'm not sure. Um, do we do we link in with them in terms of their cultures? Oh, can you hear me? Sorry, yep. okay, so I, I, I think I, I think I'd dipped out a, a wee bit there. Yeah, I mean it's obviously a, a nationwide, and I don't know if that's Scotland wide or, or further afield. Um, and do we do we look at their ethos as a company in terms of the other settings that they operate in and, and inspections that are carried out in those settings? Also, how do we do piece together, you know, a picture of of the kind of ethos that 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 company operate under? I'll, I'll answer this one, Annie, if that's OK, um, Councillor Shires and, and also to Councillor Rebick. Um, so this company is a, a nationwide company. It is across the UK, well, Scotland and the north of England mainly. And certainly Ben and Annie and the team have linked with the national organisation. And I think Annie alluded to that, that um, the national organisation, which is a very large national organisation with lots and lots of nurseries, and certainly what we are aware of is that there is a, a particular issue in relation to culture in many of those settings and we've liaised with the care inspectorate in relation to that also because as the registered um, inspection agency they also have a view of across large organisations such as, as Corner House. 
So absolutely, we, we do make sure that that is included and make recommendations in line with the care inspector, in fact, in this case. So we are monitoring it very carefully. And in terms of um, early indications of improvement, Councillor Rebick, I mean, we can I can talk to Ben about how we do that. Um, because we do have a number of nurseries and settings within which we have action plans. And I think I mentioned that we've got four on, on the go at the moment. And committee will be aware that on, on two occasions recently, we've actually come out of partnership with um, two nurseries because the improvements that we were um, expecting to see and supported very heavily for quite a long time did not occur. And therefore, we could not continue in partnership with a setting that was not able to reach the standard, even with very, very intensive and targeted support from ourselves. So we will do that, but um, we'll perhaps um, provide an interim report for those nursery settings and we can talk um, perhaps out with the committee about how we might do that. Thanks, Sharon. I think really, I mean, I, I totally understand that we're all we're all all really busy and these things are not easy and that sounds flippant and it's not meant to be. But I, I think I guess I'm, I'm just wondering if there's a stage between, as you alluded to, there's a stage between a, a less than satisfactory inspection report and then being informed as an elected member that we're now no longer a partner provider. I, I think it might be nice if there was a, an interim stage, I guess is just what I'm saying, but I appreciate that that's in practical terms, that's that's not necessarily easy to do, but that, that was what was alluded to. Thanks. Let's work with committee to do that though, Councillor Rebeck. That's helpful. Thank you very much. It takes us on to the next report. Yeah, so it was Perth College that we were going to look at next. So following the inspection at Perth College, where the main area of focus was on their leadership and management, um, we went into the setting and found out that a new manager had been appointed. Um, to this new lady, Leanne, has worked really closely with the early years team, addressed all of the requirements in very quick time, um, at pace, um, I would say, and with the support of ourselves at the team and our early year support teacher who visited regularly, um, we supported the work with the team, looked at their environment and looked closely at all of the documents, policies and guidance um, that they were working with. We did a lot of work with Leanne and her team on realising the ambition and play pedagogy. So the manager also attended our early learning and childcare leadership training which really supported her well in her role, her new role. And the early years team also met with her on a regular basis to support her leadership role, work with her on quality assurance, work with her on her policies. And the college had a return inspection just in October, which hasn't been published yet, but I can let you know that the grades were back as two very goods and two goods. So we, you know, we feel that the centre manager there has done a huge power of work in a very short space of time um, but was well supported by our team. That's very encouraging news. Um, are there any questions on this report or comments? Nope. Nope. Uh, on to the next one please Annie. Thank you. Sorry Convena, I just wanted to really quickly say can you just pass on? Sorry. Sorry, I just want to say, you know, pass on, on our thanks and uh, well wishes for such a, a sharp turnaround. And um, I think that's quite impressive to bring things up to that level in that, you know, in a good time space. So please pass that on. Oh, thank you. I definitely will. Thank you. So the next report was Milner Thorpe. Um, Milner Thorpe were inspected using our How Good Is Our Care and Support During Covid inspection model, and they were graded at twos, which was a week. In the, in the report, they highlighted that documenting correct information for, about children's needs and having the effective systems in place to ensure medication was safely managed. There was also improvement to be made in the ne taking necess necessary precautions to prevent the spread of infection. So following this, the early years team put in a support plan, which has been in place now from April until October. We've had regular contact with the head teacher and the deputy head of the school who worked quickly to ensure that the requirements were met within the timescales given. 
the early year support teacher spent a lot of time in the setting working with the team in term four after the inspection to address the key points that were that were given and staff made a huge effort to immediately improve their systems re recording of information and effectively managing their medication processes were all put in place procedures were further improved also to to improve the prevention of the spread of infection and they also put in a monitoring calendar to support that. In term four, the care inspectorate made a follow up call to the head teacher and confirmed that the actions had been taken to make the improvements. However, once these improvements had been made, there was also focus on four other areas, ensuring that all staff were deployed effectively throughout the day, effective and robust quality assurance processes, planning for all children being in place and kept updated, and a robust system for that administration of medicine. So the early year support teacher has been in the setting regularly and worked with the deputy head and the now new head teacher to look at empowering the staff team to work together effectively to ensure children are well supported throughout the session. We've built up really good relationships with both the deputy and the head teacher who have not been in post for very long. The head teacher just arrived in early September um, and they've been working very well with us, phoning us, virtual calls, meetings. We've also been along to one of their staff meetings after school, so that was really good to be invited. During the lunchtime, some experience during the lunchtime experience, some consideration was needed um, to look at the children and them as a priority and children and staff working together, having a lovely nurturing lunch. So the lunches had been over in the school at the time. However, the staff felt to make it more nurturing and more of the family mealtime experience that we're looking for. They're now trialling the lunch in the room and meeting the needs of all the children in the setting. A quality assurance calendar is now in place and the deputy has clear expectations of her staff team. This includes monitoring of the administration of medicine and the senior ECP in the setting has key responsibility for that area. So people have taken on leadership roles um, and worked very confidently and planning for all their children to improve the quality of planning. We've also just spent a lot of money um, and created some good roomscapes with the team to ensure that the environment is a much more pleasant space for the children to learn in. So the new layout um, was looked at. We've shared our core provisions so that they know what resources are meant to be in every area. And the senior ECP has been working really well with us and the team to look at best ways of improving the whole setting. I think the staff said that they reflected and felt their nursery was tired and needed some love. So it's been given that um, as well. And the children have been heavily involved also in planning for the new room. It's really interesting, like the Perth College one, to see how quickly new staff, you know, coming in can can turn things around, doesn't it? It's very, um, it just shows the, the, you know, that issue about quality of leadership and, and managing the change, you know, and that even that comment you made, Annie, about, you know, uh, the nursery needing some love and how quickly they can improve the environment and the small differences that can just make such a, a huge impact in, in the setting. Uh, are there any questions on this report? Not seeing I can anything. Also, oh, sorry, I can also just add, since um, we wrote this last week and pulled this together, the deputy head from Milner Thort has put herself forward for this year's leadership in the early years training course. So that was Excellent. really good as well. So that's another positive in their direction. That's good. Uh, Councillor Councillor Rebic followed by Councillor Simpson. Thank you, convener. Uh, two questions, if I may, but um, hopefully quite brief ones. Um, in the requirements of the inspection report, there were specific requirements with specific timelines on them. I think all of which have passed. So I'm just wondering if we're satisfied in broad terms that we've met those requirements and those timelines. It sounds like we have. And, and just curiosity for me, I know that without wanting to pinch Lewis's um, 
themes. I know that there is though a big, there's a huge park and grass area at the back of the school, and I'm just wondering if the nursery has access to that or not. Thanks. Yeah, I can answer that. Yeah, the care inspector did a follow up virtual phone call with the head teacher in term four just before the summer um, and documents were shared over the screen. And yeah, they were very pleased that things had been Im implemented and put into place. And yes, they have access to all the spaces around the nursery down in Milner Thought and they do use them a lot too, although they have a very warm and welcoming nursery garden that they're developing at the moment as well, which the children use. Excellent, thank you very much. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Senior. This question could apply to what some, some of the other reports as well. I, I just note when they're speaking to an area where what people told us, they don't sp seem to speak to very many parents. Now, I realise you can't speak to them all, but um, I, I note uh, the views of two or three people uh, in, in life in general don't always give you the full picture. And I just wondered how we go about trying to get these views, because very often you actually want the views of the people who don't put themselves forward are sometimes more interesting than those people who are straight onto Twitter or whatever it is they do to, to spread their views. And I just wonder to what extent A, we canvass opinion and B, that we, um, how we deal with that opinion to make sure it's, it's as accurate as possible. Annie. Uh, yeah, I can answer those. Yeah, I can answer that. So the care inspectorate send out questionnaires to a majority of the parents in every setting, and it's entirely up to those parents themselves whether they respond. Um, but yeah, that's something that we could be looking at with the care inspectorate, which who we meet regularly and possibly see how we can, you know, get some more people um, to complete questionnaires. Because yeah, I, I agree with you, two or three. Um, family responses is not a lot from possibly 70 or 80 families. Yeah, I mean, I think f further, if I may, can be just, I just wonder, wonder to what extent we do follow. I, I was recently had some some involvement in, in, in a nursery at my grandson goes to in another, another area and they, they managed to provide the wrong email address twice, which is enough to put a lot of people off, you know, and I just wondered, it, it's always very difficult to, to, to gauge opinion if you're just relying on the people that maybe I'm kind to say shout the loudest, but are, are there at the front of the queue. It's really the folk lurking at the back you want to hear from a, as well, and I think it would be reassuring ac across all these reports if we were a bit more proactive in getting um, people's opinions. That wasn't really a question to me, or pardon me, that was just me having a... No, it's it's a very valid point though, isn't it? It's the same in, you know, schools as well as in preschool and early learning settings. Sharon, you wanted to make a point? Just, thank you, convener. Yes, just to, just to add to um, to that, Councillor Simpson, so the care inspectorate are, are the care inspectorate and they do what they do and they put out their questionnaires, etc. Um, however, we in person, Ken Ross, and across all local authorities, have a requirement to consult with all of our parents and our future parents, so parent, parents of children who are not yet within our nurseries every two years about the quality and the kind of um, early learning and childcare provision that they want us to provide. So we do that exercise every two years and we do quite a lot of analysis around that. And where we don't get a good uptake, then what we will also encourage our nurseries to do, but we do anyway, is to, to, to seek for focus groups to be presented where we can try and catch mums and dads as they come into the nursery to drop their children off um, and just grab them for 10 minutes. And we are looking at lots of different and quick ways to gather um, the views of parents who just don't have time or the inclination to fill out lengthy questionnaires. So we're, we're actually doing something at the moment um, in our early learning and childcare settings about the family meal experience. Members will be aware that we're doing something slightly different from other uh, local authorities in relation to how we deliver our meal service. Um, and we want to create a family meal type approach rather than, you know, uh, the usual stuff that happens in, in schools. And so we're engaging with our 
with their parents about what that feels like for them, how they would like it to progress, etc. So over the course of you know a year, we will take opportunities to engage with our parents outside of the CAME Spectorate um, just to gauge their views on lots of different things. And we are mindful that, that some parents don't like to fill in questionnaires, but might be happy to talk to a key worker when they drop off their child at nursery. So we're working hard on ways to try and capture some of that because um, it is very important information and feedback. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, that takes us, I think, on to the final Appendix 4, Morrison's Academy Nursery. Annie? Yeah, Morrison's Academy. So we've been supporting Morrison's now since July, following their inspection, and they're on a COVID support plan with us, which finishes in January 22. Our regular visits are focusing on the following as robust system for the administration of medication, support for their children at times of transition, planning for all children being kept in place and updated, and high quality interactions for all our children. A new, um, a new manager was appointed in the summer. Um, she has no recent experience in the Scottish education system, but she's been teaching abroad for some time. So we are providing a bespoke programme with her uh, detailed um, from the early years team to signpost relevant training, model, role model with her, and she's also working with our early year support teacher and education support officer to look through our ELC Glow page, which has a lot of resources on there and up to date guidance, courses, training, small bite sized materials that she can access to, to really get her up to speed. Although she did teach in Scotland many years ago. Um, it's the recent kind of guidance that she just needs some support with. She's also going to join our ELC leadership training um, and has signed up for that on Friday, which is very great for us. Um, the meal times and time spent outdoors have been monitored by the team and we've put some really clear guidance to the manager to what our expectations are and how this would best work at Morrison's with the setting that they have. Staff were quite reluctant to change in the setting. However, the manager and the early years team have given very high level expectations that the children shouldn't have any downtime during the session unless it's to rest. On a recent visit, the lunch was supported by the early years support teacher who was modeling really high quality interactions with the children at that time and other staff were sitting at the tables too and taking on board what our support teacher was doing. Unfortunately, when we went on our visits, the doors to the garden, which is an amazing space up at Morrison's Academy, were not open and we are addressing this issue as well, because as you have spoken about before, it's really important for our children to be outdoors. And individual plans for children are now in place, um, which we've been looking at with the manager and we're regularly ensuring that these are updated and in line with what our expectations are. So we do see progress there and we're hoping that we've, when we work with the new manager, again, a new member of staff, giving a clear expectations and a lot of support, we feel that we will progress. Thank you for that. I noticed the uh, possibly the best line I think I've read in one of these reports in a long time. I'm so tired. I've been busy playing all day. So you can <laughs> just let us know feedback from one of the little people. Um, Councillor Sarwar, you've got a question. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we've we've touched on, um, you know, the importance of outdoor spaces and it, again on the kind of way that we sometimes have to read through the between the lines in these reports. And I'm just I felt that um, obviously it was a real positive that they've got the outdoor space, but that the perhaps um, if that without that the grading would have been even lower and that that was the only thing that kind of balanced out some of the weaker areas and so I just wondered if there'd been an over reliance on using the outdoor spaces and that that meant perhaps they hadn't really thought through what they would need in terms of other processes uh, for COVID protections is that kind of a fair analysis and do you think that um, there's you know I, I guess I'm just wondering about how things are being changed and whether this is another one that we need a bit of an update on again in, in the future. 
Yeah, I'm happy to answer that one yet. So we've really looked at the processes and all the infection control procedures that are happening both indoors and outdoors at Morrison's. And yes, it probably is easier to keep your children outside to avoid that spread of infection. However, looking at the core provision and what's on offer in the nursery and ensuring that all of the loose parts are available for children and everything is kept safe um, and, you know, in, infection control is you know a real high priority for them we feel that yeah they are they are a setting that are moving forward but i think yeah keep you updated and keep you in the loop as to where we are with them as things progress that'd be helpful thank you annie uh, councillor simpson thank you I, I, I think i note the expression room for improvement would apply to this nursery i think but obviously it, it is it is happening now but i, I just wonder to, to what extent um we can we can engage with nurseries that seem to have this would appear to have fallen behind perhaps and and the new manager uh, the new person in charge needs some time to settle in but i just wonder to what extent we we, we can intervene and i think further to that i I noticed lots of weeks and adequates here. What, what, what do you have to do to get an excellent these days? I notice when you look at some of the historical um, um, tables, some people manage to get an excellent occasionally. It, is, it, is it attainable these days or is it, or is it just an aspiration? That's the two questions, could be enough, so I slipped them in. I think it's um, if you're doing something that nobody else is doing, um, you get yourself an excellent, um, which is very hard because if you're doing something really good, other people then see that and copy, so you're not the only one doing it. Um, going back to your previous comment there as well about, you know, um, new manager, etc. There's also a new head teacher um, at Morrison's Academy and Ben has had conversations with him around the historical um, staffing and also the, how the nursery has been so they've had very frank conversations um, and he's now aware of how important the ELC setting is. Well, thanks for that. If I may, you, you very cleverly answered my supplementary question before I asked it really, but I just wondered to, to what extent when, when a nursery is part of a, of a larger school, to what extent could we expect the resources and backup from the you know, the, the, the primary or secondary part of the school or the administration school to help. So I, I'm a little bit surprised perhaps here that as part of a larger school, um, there seems to be a bit of a bit of slipping, you know, so would we normally expect the rest of the school to, to chip in to assist? I, I can answer that one, Annie, if that's OK. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. I think what, what we sometimes find is where, where nurseries are part of larger organisations, there's a lack of um, expertise, perhaps, and understanding about the importance of early years. And sometimes um, head teachers don't pay enough attention to what is happening in the early years and perhaps rely on deputies and other, other members of staff to, to do that for them. And what I would say from a PKC perspective is that we fully expect head teachers to lead and manage and be aware of and understand the early years frameworks and the backgrounds and and the expectations around it, it is the most important part of education and so therefore we have really um, developed a lot of leadership activities where we expect head teachers and not just early childhood centre managers to be part of that and we've got a new leadership academy which Ben has been developing over the last couple of years with that very thing in mind to make sure that everybody understands if you you're ahead of a, an establishment that has a nursery, then you need to be as um, knowledgeable and understand the context of it as you would for any other part of the school. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm not seeing any further comments or questions. Um, so I think that. We, do we have Appendix 5 as well? Does that I'm not seeing I've got that on my agenda, but I'm not seeing one in my in my pack. That must have been a typo from somebody um, just to keep me on my toes there, Sharon. Um, so that that brings us to the end of the meeting. I think we covered quite a lot of ground and and I mean, yet again, we like to just come back to, to the Sharon to 
pass on our thanks to to all of our teams um, across ECS who who've worked through over the last you know year since the last uh, inspection committee um, through some pretty challenging uh, circumstances to to support um, a vast array as we we've seen this morning of uh, different settings um, and bring about some quite major change within them uh, to the benefit of the of the children that attend. Um, Councillor Simpson, are you wanting to make a comment as well there? Has that just popped up? Really, I was, I was waiting until you'd finished, could you know better oh. if you finished or not? Yeah, no, I no, I was just, it, just, to, just to pass on our thanks as we always do, but I, I, we don't want it to be, uh, to use Councillor Rebick's uh, phrase, flippant, we genuinely mean it. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no, there's no uh, mightier work that staff can do than work with children at the very start of their education experience uh, to, to bring about that benefit. I'll, I'll let Councillor Simpson bring his words of wisdom in now. Well, I'm not so sure about that, but I'll try. I, I just, I'm just i struck uh, at, at this meeting, as I always am at these things where reports come, that the, the importance of, of highlighting to everyone involved uh, how it's it's a good idea to ask for some help. There's a huge amount of resource and backup available um, uh, to, to, to help get things right. Um, obviously getting an excellent, maybe 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 a step too far, but to improve things. And I think that's the message to all all the, the people involved in, in all these reports, that even if there are things that need some, some work done, there's there's a, a huge amount of help, not just within ECS, but as we heard within Environment Service and other, and other services to, to assist. And you know, I think the old the old expression you, you don't get if you don't ask. I think if you it's it's much easier to ask and get the help than us to determine what we ought to do. And also sometimes there's nothing worse than somebody helping you if you don't really want them to, you know. So but the, the message I think seems seems to be for, for goodness sake, ask for the backup because there's there's loads of it available. Um but it's not always going to be there if you don't make make plain that you require it, you know. Absolutely. Councillor Rebick. Thanks, Convener. Just very briefly, I do think it's worth noting that uh, the very um, worthwhile and commendable aspiration, uh, well, not aspiration, the delivery of Dublin child care is, is tremendous, but I think we have to be realistic that that sometimes will um, be difficult to deliver because it's a doubling. And so, I, again, it's just to thank officers for all the work that they've done over the the last several years, but to, worth noting that of all the childcare settings we now have in that expansion, although we've got four come before us today for the wrong reasons, we do get them coming in front of us for the right reasons occasionally. And I think Sharon will know the number and Annie will know the number better than me, but I think it's close to 100 settings by the time we put in partner providers and school nurseries and childminders. So to have four come up in front of us is, is actually not really anything that I think broadly we need to be too worried about or concerned about. And just to echo Lewis's, thank you, Annie, 108, so I was close. Um, but just to echo Lewis's very valid point about asking for help, I do think at Perth and Kinross we deliver education very well and particularly the nursery education. So I think that's a great point that we should all take cognizance of that we're here to to help and not judge and I think that's a very important important point that Councillor Simpson makes there so thank you. Absolutely that's very valid points um, so with those comments I'll bring this to me hopefully it won't be a year before we we meet again <laughs> I expect that we'll get back into into more of a, a normal cycle and I did remember Sharon that we we were due to have a chat with uh, Education Scotland, I think it was, was it about the um, inspection uh, cycle and obviously they'll have a lot on their plate getting back into, into a schedule of, of inspections, but just if we can keep that on our agenda as an action point, um, that would be That's helpful. Councillor Shires, um, I've actually been invited to a meeting um, over the next few weeks to support with um, the, the advice and guidance that's going to be written from January. So once I get an idea of a timing for that, then perhaps we could invite our area lead officer um, to a meeting in, in January, should we go ahead as normal, as part of the normal cycle. So I'll take that forward. Thank you. And with that, we'll bring the meeting to a close. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon. Thank you.